Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the path guide system in order to create a pattern of 20mm holes over a surface in order to use as a track saw cutting station. Let's get going. So I'm filming this video in preparation for a series that I'm due to start after this video, which is going to be making a massive path cutting station, track saw station sort of thing. But for the time being, what I need is a kind of portable workbench that I can take home with me and do a few home projects with because I've also moved house recently and I need a bench that I can take home. So having a portable path station as well as one that's permanent in my workshop is ideal. So if you're interested in watching that series, please feel free to click the subscribe in the bottom corner. But now as a brief overview as to how this guide works, if I just draw a real quick right angle on here, the guide works through basic trigonometry, more specifically Pythagoras. So if we assume that a triangle is three units across, so let's do this in inches, so they go three inches across and four units up, so four inches up that, that means that this distance here should be five inches exactly. There we go. So if I was to do this in millimetres, 75 millimetres, 100 millimetres up like that, and 125. If you simplify all of those measurements down to one thing, it's three, four, five. And if you stick to these guidelines, whether that's three miles across, four miles up, that will always be five miles diagonally. It could also be three microns across, four microns up, it'll be five microns across like that. If you stick to those measurements, it ensures that this three and four is a perfect right angle to each other. Basic trigonometry, I kind of remember it from school, but um, a lot of things have gone after five years of woodworking. So I've done a few demos of this at Axminster before. I uh, haven't done it in a while, so this should prove how simple it actually is because in all honesty, I can't remember exactly how it was done, but I remember it was very, very easy. So let's just see if I remember. We need one ruler down the bottom like that. And in the pack, you'll get various things in here. So you've got a couple of dogs there. You've got a drilling guide and you've got these various pins. You've also got a three millimeter drill bit as well, which is what we'll be starting with. So firstly, what I wanna do is get a row of holes drilled along this edge of the workbench. So whatever angle I put this at is gonna dictate if the square is going off that way or if the square is going off towards the camera. So just to make it look nice, I obviously want the square to be nice and even across the whole board. So I've got the bottom ruler here, which I'm spacing against the edge of the MDF. And then I can just slide this one sideways depending on where I want it. Now this top ruler has a few different holes in it. So I'm gonna space it so the outermost holes, so this one and this one are even distances from the edge of the MDF. Oh, look at that, bang on. Taking the spacer away and we will just clamp that down now. You don't need to clamp it, but it just ensures extra accuracy. And seeing as this thing's gonna dictate if all of my future cuts are square and accurate, kind of want this to be accurate too. Now we need to drill out all of these holes along this length. So we've got the drill guide and that's just a simple bit of metal with a hole in it that fits this three millimeter drill bit perfectly. So pop the drill bit in there, pop that into the hole on the ruler and that will hold it square. There we go. Now this is the fun bit. Remember what we said about the units on here, doesn't matter how large or small they are, as long as it's the same number of units across and up and diagonally, you will get a perfect right angle on this. So we've got three, four, five here. What we need to do with this path system is double that. So we'll do six, eight and 10. Exactly the same proportions, just doubled. And I'll put the right angle here so you can see exactly what the bloody hell I'm on about. We are going to remove the clamps. Get those out of the way. Then we're gonna get one of these little pins. You're gonna put that in the bottom corner where the hole was drilled on this ruler. It's a really nice snug fit, which is a good thing. We're gonna move that up to be approximately 90 degrees to these holes. We don't know where it is just yet, but we'll find that out now. So as I said, we're gonna double the units here. So on the bottom, this is gonna be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six holes across. Get one of the pins, shove that through the end of the other ruler and then pop that into the hole there. And then on this ruler, we need to double the four, so it's gonna be eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
just got enough. And then on this one, double the five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I move that hole on this ruler above the eight, get them lined up, shove the pin through it, just to ensure we have perfect alignment between the two. There we go. So that one is nice and stable now. And because of trigonometry, it is a perfect right angle to the holes that we've drilled on the bottom here. And for added security, we'll clamp it down just to make sure there's no flex in it at all. Now we'll get the old drill guide and drill all of these ones out. And for this one at the end, I will take the pin out of this one. If you don't really need that, I'll stick it there in that hole I've just drilled, just to make sure the edge of this ruler doesn't flex. And there we go, we can get access to that final hole. Lovely. Okay, so now we've done that side, we can use our initial line in order to establish the opposite edge. So we'll do exactly as we did before, but a mirrored version. One pin goes in the bottom like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pop a pin into that hole. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Swing that round to the 10 on this ruler. Cram that through the hole, bang, 90 degrees. Lock it down, just to be sure, and drill these out as well. So now we've got a big U shape in the top of this MDF. Take this one off and then simply move this ruler to one of the holes that is up in this top corner here. And then hopefully this will line up with one of the holes here. If it doesn't, then you've somehow done something wrong. Boom, there we go. So they line up perfectly, which means that these holes either side are perfectly parallel to one another and right angles to that bottom edge as well. It's always nice when that works out. So we'll drill these out now. Lovely job, and we'll just do a few checks at this point, just to double check that this final one that I've drilled in is a perfect right angle to these edges. So we'll just do the same rule as we did on that initial edge. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pin can go in that one there, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should line up perfectly with number 10 which it does, so that's good. And then I'll do a check on this side as well. Always worth double checking this because as I said at the start, this is what will dictate, I can't talk while counting, three, four, five, six. This will be what dictates if your cuts are square in the future. This thing will haunt you for the rest of your time while owning it, if you don't get this right. There we go. All good. Now this is the pretty boring bit. We've got to do all the holes in the center. So that, well, hey, don't drop that. That involves simply putting a pin in this end, put it in the second row of holes, get it in this end here, pop that parallel to it, and then drilling all of these ones and repeat, 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 repeat. Shouldn't take you too long, but you start getting sick of the old sound. So now we have a pattern of perfectly right angle three millimeter holes all the way over this surface. So next we're gonna be using this little jobby as well as a boring bit that is also included in the kit. This is 20 millimeters wide and it has a three millimeter spur on it, which is gonna locate in those three millimeter holes we've already got drilled. So it's worth saying that you don't need to drill out all of the holes in this surface. You really need access to all of them. I've done three millimeters all over so I can easily expand it later if needed. But for now, I think what I'm gonna do is do these first few rows, all 20 mil, and these top two rows, 20 mil. And then I'm just gonna do one down either edge, I think, and then 
I'm going to split it into four. So do two horizontal rows and then four vertical columns should be enough for all my cross cutting. And then I should still be able to do 45 degree cuts on that as well. But we'll just go with that and then I can expand it later if needed. So before we go any further, I just want to talk about this boring bit that is supplied in the kit. This, like I say, is 20 millimeters in diameter. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the edges of this are actually sort of splayed out like this a little bit like ever so slightly. So it means that when it's drilling, it doesn't bind up at the top here, like the bottom is just ever so slightly wider. So the reason I'm telling you this is to warn you, don't do what I did. The first time I used this kit, I drilled through the MDF at the top and then I hit a saw horse underneath, which chipped these little spurs on the corners here. Now on most forcing bits, that just means you've made it a little bit blunt. It doesn't change the actual diameter of the thing at all. But with this, because it's got the tapered edges, if you chip those edges off, You've brought them in a little bit like that and then the diameter is a little bit smaller than what's intended and this is a massive problem because as we've already seen with the guide pins and everything that i've been using in the kit everything is a very very tight fit in order to maintain maximum accuracy but if you chip even the smallest bit off these and that hole becomes smaller, then that fit is so tight that you're not gonna be able to get the dogs in afterwards. You really need to make sure you look after the tips of these. Do not knacker them like I did. So in order to get this boring bit drilling accurately on the holes and also plumb, we're gonna be using this jig here. Now this comes with two separate bushing thingies or something like that. And I'll show you why we need two of them in a minute. But for the time being, it's best not to start on that corner one. We'll start drilling this one out. The way it works is we've got a few little holes in here. So you put a pin through this, that will go into the hole below. So now there's pivots. And then on this side here, there's a couple of other holes where you can also line up those guide pins. And if I get my old phone light in there, you can see that it is exactly above a hole below. So we need to get the drill bit in there first, obviously. So I'll just spin that out of the way. Careful not to drop it, you idiot. And then pop that over there, put these pins back in place. And then we've also got a little stop collar here that can prevent me drilling too deep. So actually <laughs> I need to set that to make sure it's the correct depth for the MDF. So there we go, just get that. So it is just cutting through the MDF, doesn't need to go too deep and then get that stop collar locked in place, not too tight. You don't want to strip the thread, obviously. And there we go. This just ensures that when I take the drill off, this drill bit doesn't fall through the jig, through the hole that we've just drilled and then onto the concrete floor below and chip those corners that are ever so important. So let's try again, spin it round. Guide pins in place. That is now directly located above a three millimeter hole. Then we'll get this on, let's take that off. We'll get this on very carefully and start going. is number one done so now if i take this out that drill bit won't fall through the hole below and onto the concrete floor nice little handy thing that definitely add it if you get this so now we've got to flip the jig around so it's above the next hole i can get a guide pin here and then obviously i can't get one in this pin now because we've got the hole drill below but we still have the corner one that we can use which will still be sufficient Just be wary because this is MDF. You can get a vacuum attachment for this now, which I don't have, but definitely worth getting. So at this point, we wanna drill this hole out, but there is nowhere for this jig to locate on this opposite edge at all. These pins here are already drilled out, so I can't use those, and these holes have nothing lined up with them yet. So we need to skip that hole, use that one for another pin alignment. So pop that in there, get another guide pin in this side here, and we'll drill another two here, skip the next, and then another two. Right, so that's all of the holes drilled out using the pins and the drill bit in this bushing. Now what we're going to do is take the drill bit out of that bushing and we're going to put it into the opposite one 
and I'm just going to set that depth stop again. So now if I take all of these pins out, we don't need those. And this is the hole we want to drill out. Now that I've moved the drill bit across to this second hole, if I locate it over there and get that spur in place, you can see that these two holes now line up with one of the previously drilled dog holes. So with the dogs that you get in the kit as well, pop those in the hole below, give it a little push, we'll lock the jig in place above that hole that hasn't been drilled out yet. Now in some cases you might get caught out with this and you'll be left with a mixture of dog holes that line up and ones like this where you've got the three millimeter hole in the center of a dog hole. With that you can use your drill guide, pop that in there and then you can put in either the drill bit or you can get one of the guide pins as well and that will firmly lock it in place even better. And then same as before, lots of drilling. There we go. Two rows of 20 millimeter dog holes and then four columns of cross cutting areas that I can use the guide rail. And now just a nice little way to finish off these holes is using this chamfering tool that comes with it as well. You could also use a router with a chamfering bit, but this is all done by hand. And if you don't have a router, then this might be worth getting. Nothing particularly special, just a grippy bit here. And then the cutting bit is that right there. See that bit that's shining right now? So it's pretty much the same as one of the teeth of my segmented planar thicknesser. Um, but yeah, it works quite nicely. All you do is cram it into the hole. That's a tight fit, obviously. Give it a clockwise spin until it stops cutting. And then that is beautifully chamfered and will accept the dog a lot easier now. Okay, so I'm going to get the top attached to these saw horses now. By screwing this down, yes, there is a slight risk in me hitting a screw with the circular saw, but I like to live life on the edge. What can I say? But no, it's right on the edge here, so I'm very unlikely to do that. So now we've done all this hard work, it'd be rude not to test it out and see if it actually is square or not. So I've got two dogs set up here along the width of the board and then I've got two dogs along the length as well. So we're going to test it on this bit of OSB left over from my workshop move. If you're new to this channel, I have only just moved into this workshop. So if you want to see the renovation progress, then um, link is in the top corner. That one is resting against the dogs there and then you get the guide rail and it rests against those ones there. Let's put a bit more out the back, I think. Lovely. Spot on. I'll do it all one take just so you can see. Right. There we go. Right. So if I push that into the edge there, look at that. No error with that whatsoever. Can't complain about that, can you? And similarly, you can also do 45 degree cuts if you butt this against a horizontal one and then you put the dogs in diagonally like that. And that should mean that when you flip this over like that and you get a square on the top corner. If I slide this one up, we've got a perfectly square edge there. And there we go, that is the path guide system in a nutshell. So. If you want to know more about this, see various other things that you can do with it. Have a look at Peter Parfit's channel because he is the inventor of this. It's so simple yet 
ingenious at the same time. You can see that it works brilliantly. So I'd encourage you to have a look at his channel. This is the Mark I version that I'm using at the moment. There is a Mark II version out that allows you to change the whole spacing and some of these pins have little nicer grips on them. But if you don't need anything too fancy, then the Mark I will do just fine. Um, as I said at the start of the video, I will be doing a massive path table, 2.4 meters long by 1.2 meters wide, the size of a entire sheet. That will be an ongoing series that I'm running after this video. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and you'll get notifications when those videos are out. And if they're already out, the video is up here for you to watch now. So I am going to stop talking. See you in the next video.